Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We're really glad you're here. We sit down with a phenomenal man of God, John Schramm. You probably know him as the friendly officer at the front of the church. He also is a big part of what we do in the way of security and safety here on campus. Um, but he has a phenomenal story. He has an incredible family. Um, he is retired military and just a lot of a lot of really cool situations God has brought him through. God has given him favor, and we would love for you to hear it directly from him. So let's jump right in. Well, hello, Heritage family. We are here again with a another fantastic winning conversation. Who's with me today? It's me. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And the uh, the star of the show is Officer John Schram. Who, welcome to the yeah, podcast. First, great of all, to be welcome. here. Thank you. Like. This is the one I'm really excited for. And I that say that with all the conversations, but I'm yeah. always happy about certain conversations and you specifically because you are such an important part of this heritage family, but one of those people that probably most people don't talk to. Yeah. You're one of the, the officers that work here, that protect this house, that like literally are there every Sunday that people walk by and say hi to. You're always so friendly and saying hi to everybody. But like myself, we don't really know you mm -hmm. <laughs> like I've never had a chance to sit down and have a conversation which is why this is going to be amazing and yeah. I'm super excited for it I'm excited as well so give us a little you know elevator pitch about your background a little bit about yourself so we can kind of set the stage okay well um I was probably about six years old when I got saved um we uh we went to different churches for a bit we're searching for more you know what I mean like uh, the church we were at, it was good. We were getting fed, but we knew there was more. So then we ended up at a Pentecostal church. Um, we engaged in there. I was still very young at that time. My mom was the youth leader. And eventually we ended up at Living Word North, which is a church affiliated with Dr. Barkley. And so we were there for a while. Um, eventually we ended up moving to Cincinnati and then from Cincinnati to here. So. And so you've been here for how long now? Uh, since 2012. 2012. Wow, so yeah. you've been here for a minute. We have. Okay. And it's you, your wife, and your... My two, two boys. boys. Yes, ma'am. Which I'm sure the audience has seen your son. And yes. You've seen him. You he's know you've seen, seen, seen yeah. both of them. There's yes. this little, <laughs> little man named Jaden who's always just done up with the suit. Dressed to Every the time yeah. I see him, I'm so happy I see him. <laughs> he's in the... And he's on the he's on the usher team, is he not? Because he, yes. he see is. Him. Yeah, he's I love that. Usher. I love it. I love it. So tell us more about your family, about Misty, your wife, and your kids. Uh, well, my kids are uh, very involved in sports. That's something that they're, you know, especially Jaden, he's really passionate about football. Uh, Brady, um, he does some sports, but not, you know, quite as passionate about Jaden. You know, he'll find his place. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jay, if you know Brady, though, Brady is a very spirited child. And uh, you know, that's what his name means, is one full of spirit, so... Uh, prophetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I he, get the joy of teaching him on Sunday schools when I get to be in there, <laughs> yeah. and he is full of life, that young man. <laughs> he is. He's fun. And he's I, awesome. I believe that's going to be a two-way thing. In other words, he's full of spirit personality-wise, but I believe he's going to be full of the spirit of the Lord as he continues to grow and develop and mature. So Absolutely. That's my absolutely. belief. And Jaden has quite an interesting story. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, with Jaden, it really began when I was about 12 years old. I always had this desire that I wanted my firstborn to be a son. So I, I prayed for that. And so um, when Misty, you know, we found out that she, she was pregnant, um, I started inquiring of the Lord about a name because I've always believed that a name is important. It's more than just a name. It, it means something. And what that name means has purpose. And so I was praying and, and looking at names and stuff. And I came across Jaden. And when I saw the meaning of Jaden, it meant Jehovah has heard. Mm -hmm. So, and I showed Misty that and we were excited. We're like, yeah, that's going to be his name, Jaden. Mm -hmm. So it was decided that his name would be Jaden. Jehovah has heard. So uh, I was in Afghanistan, one of my later deployments, and I put in for leave. And when you, uh, when you're going to have a birth of a child, you have priority with leave. Mm -hmm. So I had priority with leave. And so I went to the, uh, the military airport terminal to fly out. And so everything went smooth there, except for once we got on the plane, uh, the plane had mechanical issues. So we had to deboard the plane. 
And then so they said, oh, we don't know how long it's going to take to fix it or whatever. So they were able to fix it in a reasonable amount of time. And then so we were flying to Kuwait and Kuwait is like the hub from there. You, you go, you're there for a period of time. Then you go to the United States. And so on the way to Kuwait, there ended up being a sandstorm. And so they had to turn around and land the plane again. Oh my gosh. And so it wasn't looking good. And sometimes it takes people a week, you know, to get out of there. And so I went to the person that ran the airport terminal and I said, man, I'm supposed to be having a baby. I need to get out of here. Yeah. And they're like, well, there's no guarantees, but you can stay here if you want. And if something opens up, then, you know, we'll put you on that. And so I was there for about eight hours or so. And then it just so happened that one of the other people that was supposed to go on leave ended up canceling and there was an open seat for me. So awesome. that got me nice. to Kuwait. So then we got to the United States and my wife and I, we went and we had a pizza and we were watching a movie. And in this movie, it was about midnight. Uh, this lady's water broke in the movie. And just as the lady's water broke, my wife's water broke. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I, I thought she was kidding or whatever, but obviously if you've experienced that, you know when a water yeah. breaks. And so we went to the I'm hospital. Sorry, take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wow. And so we went to the hospital or whatever and went through the whole process, you know, of being in labor and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then once it come time for Jaden to be born, uh, there was complications. Yeah. The The cord was wrapped around his neck a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, he was strangled when he came out, and he came out dead. And so all the nurses and everything come rushing in, and they're all doing CPR on him and everything. And it had been a long period of time, um, at least like 10 minutes. And you're feeling all these mm -hmm. feelings of hopelessness a little bit and, you know, things like that. Yeah. But what's inside of you is what's going to come out. And I believe, you know, very greatly in the law of confession. You know, the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue and you'll, you'll eat the fruit thereof in James. So um, that's all going on. And then all of a sudden, like the Holy Spirit rose up inside of me and Romans 417, you know, come resonating inside of me. And I heard the Holy Spirit, you know, loud as day, I am the God that quickeneth the dead and calleth those things to be not as though they were. His name means Jehovah has heard. Mm -hmm. So right there, only thing that come out of my mouth, I stretched my hand out and I said, you're going to live and not die in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then I took action. And then I began to comfort my wife and say, hey, he's just sleeping. He's coming back. Everything's going to be fine. And he'd been without oxygen and everything for, you know, probably a good 15 minutes or so by this point. Wow. And then, boom, life came back into him. And when life came back into him, uh, he ended up having some seizure-like activity and like that from the brain being starved of oxygen and everything. Right. Yeah, 15 and, minutes is incredibly long without oxygen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, One of those situations where in a normal situation, a, a person suffers permanent brain damage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So they ended up taking him to uh, Cincinnati Children's to the NICU. Misty, obviously just giving birth, had to you know stay behind and be taken care of herself. Mm -hmm. And so I went with Jaden, and we got to the NICU, and I uh, was talking to the doctors. You know, they're going to tell you the things in the natural like they're supposed to. Right. And um, one doctor told me that, hey, you need to prepare yourself for the worst. Your child was a long time without oxygen. It's most likely that he's going to have suffered permanent brain damage. And so, you know, I told the doctor that I didn't believe that. I didn't receive that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't, he's like, I don't think that you are. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> it's not what I asked you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I don't think you're properly mentally preparing yourself or understand, you know, the, the severity of the circumstances. And mm -hmm. I told him, I said, look, man, I said, I just came back on leave from war. I said, I know all about mental preparation. I said, now you do your best and we'll let God take care of the rest and you're going to witness a miracle. Mm. And Get he em. said, fair enough. And we shook hands and, and agreed to disagree. And I said, I didn't want to hear any, anything else of it unless you had some kind of conclusive proof. And so when I went and saw my child, he was on a ventilator. Jaden was on a ventilator. Uh, apparently, one of the ribs had gotten fractured and punctured a lung. So he needed assistance breathing. Mm. Well, by the, and then they asked me too, they had some experimental stuff going on. They're like, hey, can we put him on a cooling blanket? Uh, we want to leave him on a cooling blanket 72 hours. It's supposed to reduce swelling in the brain. So I prayed about it and I felt good about it. So we did the cooling blanket. You know, you do what you can in the yeah. natural as well. 
Of course. And so he's on the cooling blanket and everything. Uh, I stayed the night with him. When I woke up the next day, the ventilator was out of his mouth, and he was breathing on his own. Mm. And so his rib had been healed, and his lung was no longer punctured. And, what? The, he, and that gave you hope like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Come on. I, <laughs> I mean, I, that worked. I just keep thinking about Misty being like just giving birth and then she's not able to. How how was she throughout this? I can't imagine what she went through. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm thinking about. Like as a mom, there, I'm like, I cannot imagine sitting there like knowing that your baby's going through this. Like, I'm glad that you had the faith for her also yeah and with hers there was some extra complications that required some things for her to stay a little longer in the hospital than a yeah. typical you know hospital birth too so it was a couple of days before she was able to to make it over there but they saw that and they're like well you don't need the ventilator so we're not going to put that in anymore but they they put him on supplemental oxygen they wanted to have supplemental oxygen so i was okay with that uh, and then they started doing tests, and they were expecting to find stuff wrong. They tested mm -hmm. his brain, MRI, kidneys, lungs, heart, everything, and they could not find anything wrong with him. Wow. Praise and the original God. prognosis was they believed he was going to be in there at least three weeks. And I said, no, he'll be out in nine days. I said, I'm here on leave, and he's going to be back in time to visit the family on Easter before I fly back to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, you know, okay, whatever. So they, they took and did all their tests and everything, and they couldn't find anything wrong with them. And they told me the last thing that he was going to have to do is he was going to have to be able to eat on his own before they would let him go. Mm -hmm. And so by this time, Misty was out of the hospital and everything, and we came in Wednesday, and we heard the doctors talking about what a miracle he was because there was no other way to describe it. And so when they, they said that, Misty and I, we went out and got a car seat because he was eating on his own at that point. Mm -hmm. And so we came back with the car seat and everything and they're like, oh no, we're not, we're not going to let him go. And I said, no, no, no. You told me <laughs> yeah. once he eats that he's good to go. Mm -hmm. So I can be pretty direct and whatnot. <laughs> so <laughs> so th they ended up seeing it my way. It's my kid. Yeah. Shocker. And, yeah. and so, yeah, he ended up coming home with us and he got to spend Easter with us, with the family and everything. And then I flew back to Afghanistan and completed my mission. One, that's, that's so unbelievable. Way to yeah. call it out, right? Way to call your shot for sure. But <laughs> what did the doctor say? Did you go back to him and say... I, I didn't see that doctor oh, again. Oh, man. Those are the ones that I'm always <laughs> curious about. Like, when you declare it and absolutely say, no, 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 mm -hmm. my... Like, you know, we've had a similar story with... Um, oh, uh, Natasha's... Mm -hmm. Um, and like, like, no, my God's a God of miracles. I, mean, I remember that story so vividly. And this is an exact one. Like, no, my son's healed. Like we serve a mighty God. And Jaden is one of the top students in his class. So, so that's what I was going to no... ask. So <laughs> si how old is he now? He's 12. So for the last 12 years, there's, he's healed completely. There's been no issues. He's amen. Yeah. Yeah, I, love, I, love, I like, like how Like 15 minutes without that. oxygen. Yeah. Like 15 minutes is an astronomically long amount of time without oxygen for any human being, especially Absolutely. a brand new or, newborn baby. Like yeah. it's just. It's a miracle. It, it, there is no other way around it. It's it only God being, it's a miracle because that is not a natural situation at all. So that's such a, oh. And is it, it cool that you did just to stand on that, that rock, that foundation of faith for you personally of knowing like who you serve? Oh, Absolutely. I mean, and him too, and your kid. I mean, that's what that's I'm saying. Like to have kids. that, like not everyone has that kind of like just concrete, like you know, the, your faith. Like I believe for he was raised from the dead, like oh Jesus was. I mean, I people try to say that people don't be raised from the dead anymore. I'm sorry, man. Check I have it. to I'm contest like, yeah, that because I, I lived it. I got a yeah. Lazarus right next to me right now. You yeah, know? that's amazing. Yeah, oh, that is cool amazing. It is amazing. I want to talk about you. Kind of mentioned it that you were going back to Afghanistan, so you have this military background. I want to hear a little bit about that. Oh, I agree. Can we do that? I, I'm on board. That's okay. a fantastic. <laughs> okay, well, I went in the military, and uh, the Lord, you know, blessed me there uh, for sure. There was, uh, there was a couple deliverances I had to go through because there was a, a point in time where he was my Savior, but he wasn't my Lord. Mm -hmm. Pastor Justin preached about it, and I completely related when he talked about sharing the stool with Jesus. Oh, Jesus needs the whole stool, but like you're still trying to keep this little yeah, piece or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. and, it wasn't convicting at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had a major issue with pride. Like one of the things when people saw me that was like 
the quality and characteristic that people saw. And that was from when I was a child. My family used to tell me, I used to brush my hair and say, I'm handsome. And they'd say, no, you're not, you're ugly. And then I would throw a fit and cry and they thought it was hilarious. And so <laughs> as a- uh, Hold on, what? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bomb did you just drop right there? <laughs> Holy Toledo's. First of all, you're a uh, uh, devastating handsome man. <laughs> Uh, maybe I refute the, the words of your parents. <laughs> well, it wasn't my parents. It was an, an aunt and some yeah. other people. And you, your parents wouldn't do that to you. You know, the Holy Spirit is awesome, and uh, he'll change you if you want to change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I started seeing these scriptures, you know, Proverbs 16, pride cometh before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. Or pride cometh before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And then, you know... God gives grace to the humble and resists the proud. And all of a sudden, I didn't like who I was, and I wanted to change that. So I started praying for God to change me. And I told him that I, I didn't want to be seen that way, but I wanted to be seen like David was seen, a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I started to uh, do a study about David and whatnot, and, and God completely took that out of me. And it took a long time. You know, because uh, people saw me that way for a while when you've kind of set that that characteristic. Yeah. Uh, kind of, you know, same thing as well when I was in the military. I had a phase where uh, I did a lot of swearing because in the military, uh, especially the era I came in, it was like if you didn't, it was like it was looked at as communication. There was objects and stuff that we used that were called by swear words. And so uh, it was a work that the Holy Spirit had to do on me. And, uh, you know, he took me to, to James, you know, um, where it says, oh, the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brothers, this should not be so. Mm -hmm. And I was laying there reading that, and then the Holy Spirit said, you're destroying your witness. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, it was like, man, I got to change this. Yeah. And so at that point, I gave it to him. And that's when, I, you know, I say the Lord got full lordship. I gave all that stuff over to him. And it had a major impact in my, my military. Um, as I went through my military, I always had favor. Uh, when I went through the, the first sergeant school, like we had a, a situation where we had to, uh, we were given a mission and you could request, you know, whatever you wanted for your mission or whatever. My mission was I had to set up an ambush. And so one of the other groups, their mission was to do a patrol and they were gonna go through the area that we set up the ambush and you could request whatever supplies you wanted or whatever. I was the only one that requested gas. And so when, uh, when they came through the ambush site, we ambushed them they had to put their gas masks on. We slaughtered all of them, and we didn't lose any guys. And so, you know, that was the only one that we were able to do that. So that was, you know, just the beginning yeah. of that kind of phase. Uh, as I went through my other schools, uh, like the last one I went through was uh, Master Leaders course, which is supposed to be the hardest military course that they have. And it's, uh, it's, it's a few weeks, and it's a college-level course. And I had to relearn how to do APA writing style. I'm, I don't have any college, mm -hmm. but I learned it. You know, I, I had faith, but I did my part. Faith without works is dead. So I still had to do some studying and whatnot. But by the time it was all said and done, I ended up graduating the honor grad. Wow. So, yeah. That's great. And then going to uh, Afghanistan, you know, when I was there, uh, war is very, very different because you're there – to win, you know, the, your nation's wars. Yeah. And so you don't get to go there and not fight in battle and stuff like that. You, you're you going to be in dangerous situations. So I was there. I always prayed Psalms 91. I know our church back home always prayed for my unit. And so I always had the Holy Spirit with me while I was involved over there in Iraq. And so whenever I was the mission leader, I always knew without fail if we were going to be attacked. And that's a huge advantage. You can mentally prepare yourself and, and whatnot, and, and we always had the victory. And so then I would always also pray, you know, hey, Lord, what route should we take? And he would always give me a route or whatever, and, and we would take that route. Well, there was one time where I had given one of my subordinate leaders the route, and I don't know what happened, but he didn't get it submitted when he was supposed to. So I got a call or whatever, and uh, they're like, hey, we need a route. We need it right now. And I couldn't recall what the route was. So I just, I gave a route, one of the familiar routes that we commonly take or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they plugged it in or whatever. We were going to take and do that mission that next morning. Well, that next morning, the command decided for whatever reason to have a health and welfare inspection. 
which kind of upset me because now it threw off my time, my mission, and all that kind of stuff. So we're doing this health and welfare inspection, and another squad ends up having my same route, and they were leaving like 10 minutes behind us because you don't leave at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so when they were driving my route, they ended up driving over one of the routes over uh, one of the, the sewer holes, and it was full of explosives, 2,000 pounds of explosives. Oh my gosh. Wow. And it was catastrophic. It killed the whole squad. Wow. And, you know, I wish that wouldn't happen, but unfortunately it's war and bad things happen to, to people sometimes. It's, yeah. it's the nature of it. But looking back on that, it's like, wow, I made that mistake of not getting that right route out there, and the Lord still supernaturally protected me and my squad because that would have been us. Wow. We would have rolled out 10 minutes before them and we would have been the ones going through that situation. I couldn't imagine not like having, like knowing the Holy Spirit in a situation like that. Like, I was literally just thinking that. I'm like, how do you go into those situations without them? Right. Like, Cause I feel like us people who like we, the gravity of the situation, we take it so casually because it's not us out there. We don't know, but this is like real life situations that people are put in to defend like our country and we shouldn't take it casually. You know what I mean? No, it's, Does that make the, sense? No, it makes perfect sense. And the, again, like what you're just saying, it's like the, the 10 minute, like God intervening and saying, Hey, just, you know, something has an inconvenience at the time. You're like, Oh, what's going on here? Why, you know, get us going out there. And it was, I mean, your lives, you're here talking to us now because of it. Yeah. Because of it. Absolutely. And something wow. my parents always like pray over us as being in the right place at the right time. And mm -hmm. what is it? He calls it um, divine delays. Mm -hmm. It's that's like our, and we, we do that now, like with Addie and in our family, like we always pray for divine delays and being in the right place at the right time because it could be, I mean, yeah, <laughs> catastrophic. The word Absolutely. you used. Yeah. yeah. I had people shoot at me. None of the bullets hit me. I was missed by two RPGs. One of them literally exploded right behind my Humvee. Shrapnel was bedded in the back of the Humvee. None of the shrapnel hit me. Mm. Sleeping, had Katusha rocket come through and blow up one of our latrines, which is, you know, where you use your bathroom mm -hmm. or whatever. So a uh, couple IED strikes, direct impacts under the vehicle where the armor's the weakest, goes into the, the floor but doesn't penetrate. Mm. You know, just... Supernatural yeah, safety and supernatural. protection. There's just no Golly. other way to describe it. So how do you take your military experience and then you're, now you're an officer for the Fort Worth Police Department. So how did you take your military experience and use that for something local like being an officer, being a police officer here? Uh, just whenever the Lord wants me to, to do something. I mean, there's, there's lots of times where like I'll be taking someone to jail and all of a sudden I'll have compassion for them and the Holy Spirit will be ministering, you know, talking to me to minister to them. And so right before I, we go into jail, I'll take and minister to them, pray with them. They'll get saved and then they'll go to jail. Yeah. Being a police officer in this time that we're in where cops aren't looked at in a very good light anymore, or you know what I mean? Just like socially and Culturally, how do you navigate being a police officer in this time? The only thing I can say is it's it's a gift and it's a calling, and I am where the Lord appointed me to be. Yeah. Is it easy all the time? No, it's not. But uh, but He made me for this time, for such a time as this, that I was born and I was created. And there's a lot of ministry, a lot of lives that have been changed because I am a police officer mm -hmm. and am in this current time doing this job. Like the seasons of the police scrutiny lately and the, your job seems like not only are you mostly <laughs> looked at from a, always a bad angle, like it right. never, it's never like the benefit of the doubt is on your team. It's not, but then also you have just so many other social components now that navigating, like you're saying, navigating mm -hmm. is the perfect word, like navigating your workspace and your work environment and your daily activities I mean, again, I go back to Scott about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, going into it every day has, I mean, it comes with its challenges. Don't believe everything you see on the media yeah. because there is way more support for the police, at least in the Fort Worth area, mm -hmm. than what the, the media shows. Mm -hmm. I would say probably 97% of the population 
supports the police. And we, we deal with the same 3% over and over and over, and that's where we get the headaches. And unfortunately, sometimes uh, those situations dealing with that 3% get magnified by the media. I guess it kind of goes with the right, but what you just said. I mean, the opportunity you get to minister to the people that probably need it more than anybody. Oh, yeah. I mean, you see not just the crime, the tragedy. I mean, there's people forget like the victims that you are dealing with, the people that are suffering from these yeah. horrible situations that we don't really get to see. Are we as a church family, we see them ripple effects away from the actual event, whereas you're right there, boots on the ground, you see firsthand. Yeah. And it, someone with your connection to the Holy Spirit, I mean, there couldn't be a better place for you to be. Yeah. Uh, one of the accommodations I'm actually uh, most pleased with is I got accommodation because there was a family that was having troubles with one of their sons, and we helped them solve that problem. As a police officer, you, you wear many hats. Sometimes you're a counselor or whatever. And uh, so we helped them solve that problem. But uh, and we worked through it. One of the things we did was uh, me and my partner, we prayed with them. And so after we prayed with them and everything and helped them solve that, they ended up calling in a compliment or whatever and ended up getting written up. So one of my accommodations is for, you know, awesome. meeting somebody's spiritual needs. So that was a good thing. Do you, do you work with Kappa? Uh, I, I have had some Kappas ride out with me. It's like I've always, like uh, for people who don't know Kappa, is like when the, like the people from the church, the clergy and police alliance. Is Pastor the Justin is ridden out with me. Uh, Tony's ridden out with me. So I've I just a- love that program. It just really, I mean, to put people of faith and put people in the right positions, is, I think that's it's an amazing. Necessary. It's so important, especially in our, <laughs> it's always important, but yeah. like in our current climate, I feel like it's just amazing that that's an option that people do. And this church is very much committed to that yes. program, which is, again, our family's awesome at this house. How do you use those tools for the church specifically? Like the tools that you've learned in the military and being a police officer, just all of those tools, like the leadership tools, how do you use that for the church? Uh, You just have to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Try to be in tune, you know, with your leaders and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, When God, when I prayed, you know, to be a man after God's own heart, uh, doing a study, I'm studying David again, right now, you know, one of the things I see with David is he always inquired of the Lord and it didn't take long for him to hear from the Lord. Mm -hmm. He always just got away from whatever the situation was, inquired of the Lord, got the answer and then followed through. And, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I think I, I bring in this position. I am very blessed to have the, the group that I have, the, the men and women that, that serve in the ministry that I serve in, uh, as a team, they're anointed and they all bring something special. And, you know, part of that is, uh, recognizing those gifts and qualities that God's given them and being able to, to use that, you know, to maximize that to their potential so they can be everything that God's called them to be. Another thing the Lord has always showed me extreme favor, uh, in the military too, because like I had my Iraq, but then as I progressed through the ranks, you know, I got to higher levels where you're, your position changes and whatnot, Mm -hmm. Uh, man, he put me amongst kings, you know, so to speak. There's times where there was meetings that were taking place and I had no business being there, but they called me and they wanted me there as an advisor, you know, because of the Holy Spirit that's in me. You know, they see that wisdom, that word of knowledge that comes. And there was one time that we were sitting at the table in Guantanamo Bay and that's one I signed non-disclosure agreements for, so I can't talk a lot about, but I can tell you this, we were in crisis, it was a major deal. And so we were sitting at the table trying to figure out what are we going to do? And I just asked the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, I said, you have the answer to this. What's, what's the answer? And he literally gave me the answer right there. And I stopped everybody and I said, I got the answer to this. And they're like, you got the answer to this? And I was like, yeah, I got the answer to this. They're like, well, let's hear it. And I laid it out and they're like, oh, wow, that's the answer. Wait, is like, that how intimidating did you, how, for you? How did you come up with that? And I, I told him, I said, I prayed and the Holy Spirit gave it to me. And nobody questioned it because the answer right. was there. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, okay, well, however you got there. How did you, how do you feel? Like, is that intimidating for somebody? I mean, I know you have like this incredible background, but I want to know for somebody who has seen these things, been these to these places, were you feeling intimidated? Or you just like walked in there like, Not I belong it, here. What is... There's a word for that, but... I'm humbled by the experience, but not anymore because the word says that the Bible will put you among kings. Mm -hmm. 
And so for the military, that was being amongst kings. That was just that word being fulfilled. Wow. Do you think that kind of starts back when you're 12 and your prayers of like what you wanted in life? It wasn't to be magnified according to your own pride and vanity, but really being aware of the fact that, no, Lord, I want you to be magnified. And that favor just comes from every time you get put in a place of favor, you're, you're magnifying the right person. It'd been really easy to say, how'd you get that idea? I just came to me. You know, but that wasn't going to honor uh, God. It's all for the glory pride. of the Lord. It's, it's, it'd be really easy to be like, you know, that weird moment of peer pressure of like, I don't want to sound weird and say I was just praying to the Holy Spirit, <laughs> yeah. even yeah. though that's exactly what I was doing. And, yeah. and that's the only reason I got this, but we'll, we'll, you know, and I, I'll raise my hand on this one and say where I've, I've cowered down in a situation where I didn't need to, or but right there, you had a moment to give honor where honor was due and you did it. And that's why you got favor because every time you're giving him the credit. And I believe heavily in the spiritual laws. We have, you know, the physical laws, the laws of gravity and like that, but we also have the spiritual laws, law of confession, yeah. law of faith. And, you know, those laws override some of those other laws. When, we, when you have a situation where a spiritual law overrides a physical law, we call that a miracle. To mm -hmm. me, that's the definition of a miracle. And so, you know. And you've got a lot of them. <laughs> you got a quiver full of miracles but like dr seville we all know man he is big on favor but yeah. he gives these nuggets sometimes about things that he says in his prayer and stuff like that like you know wisdom stature and favor as jesus and samuel did so that's part of my prayer you know yeah. um there's you know there's other several pieces there's a lot of, of favor things that i pray so uh i'm not saying i have as much favor as dr seville but i expect favor to happen to me mm -hmm. And it does. And when it does, I give it to the, the glory to the Lord because that's why I have that favor. That's who it's okay. about. I could not be more happy knowing that you're the person who stands in front of this house. You yeah. know, every Sunday in these events, like the like this is the kind of person that we are so blessed and thankful to have here as a part of our heritage family, you know. And so the things you do, amazing. Thank you so much. Um but a big part of this podcast and the Winning Conversations podcast is asking one significant question. And the theme of this house is making winners in life. Mm -hmm. And so we always want to know, what does that mean to you? To me, to sum it up, it means walking in the blessing of Abraham. And a lot of people associate that with uh, financial. And part of it is financial. But part of it goes deeper than that. And Pastor, you know, he touched on this about a month ago in one of his sermons. And providing for other people what they need in their time of need. To me, that's part of walking in that blessing of Abraham. And I had a, a call that I went on as a police officer. And when I got there, this lady, she was gripped with fear to the point that she was shaking and she was crying. And you could just see fear was all over her. And compassion rose up inside of me, not sympathy. Sympathy is just a feeling, but compassion. Compassion is a, is a person, you know, the Holy Spirit. And compassion will drive you to action. Uh, there's many times in the Bible where it says Jesus was moved with compassion and then he did something for somebody. So I felt this overwhelming feeling of compassion. And I told her, I said, you don't have to have this fear. The Lord doesn't want you to have this fear. I said, if you, if you want to get rid of this fear, we can get rid of it right now. And she said, that's what she wanted. So I laid hands on her and, and prayed with her. And, you know, just a simple prayer. Um, part of it being, you know, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And we claim that over her and, you know, peace to, to flood and flow through her body. And we just, that fear just melted and broke off her mm -hmm. and completely left her. And she was delivered of that. And the other person that was with her looked at me and said, wow, you're full of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, that was pretty much how that call went. And then I got in my car and I went to the next call and dealt with whatever came. But to me, that was being living that winner in life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, the blessing of Abraham, blessed to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And in her moment of need, it wasn't financial that she needed. Although there's been times where I have given, you know, people financial stuff uh, while I'm out there working, but in this case, it, w it was more. And so that's what I think. It's like the man in the temple. You gave him something so much better, gave her something so much better than money. Yes. You know, in that moment, which is just awesome. That's such a great answer. 
Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, this was such a great conversation. And thank you, Heritage family, for tuning in. We will have Jaden's testimony on our website. So if you want to check that out, go to heritageoffaith.com slash testimonies, or it will be linked in the show notes. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Come back next week for more Winning Conversations.